I heard of this um, this thing called fading effect bias. Yeah. Well, so so this year I've listened to lots of different podcasts and read up a lot of information about alcohol and why we go why we keep going back to it every weekend even though it makes us feel rubbish. And this faded effect bias is it's all to do with the fact that you forget the negative effects of a certain behavior or a certain situation over time and probably about 6 or 7 days and then <laughs> <laughs> And then you conveniently do yeah. again, and you yeah. just see it through rose-tinted glasses. And some people call it the um, what's it called? The witch, the wine witch. The wine. We call witch. it the wine witch. Yeah. Comes along. Ooh. You had a great time. Why don't you go and have another drink? Oh, like a little Tinkerbell. Like but it, it, it can also be like a lot of people don't like their jobs, and it's a big form of escapism, isn't yes. it? And as you said, rose-tinted glasses. It's like anyone who's had like a, been in a really bad relationship, and then you speak to yeah. them, and then they're thinking about going back, and they just say all the positive things about their ex-partner yeah. instead of like. Are you just forgetting yeah. like, the long list of all the negatives as well? Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, there's definitely that. There's a huge escape, escapism element to it as well, isn't there? Yeah, I think you're right. And it's a proven like, like coping mechanism. So people who are trying to distract from other things will turn to alcohol because it gives you that almost like numbing feeling, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's where maybe problematic relationships with alcohol might develop you don't have to have massive trauma in your life to still want to maybe just feel a bit like switched off mm. from life mm. and i think if people haven't got other routes to do that then it's a very accessible easy acceptable way yeah. to do that some people don't realize that there are other ways of coping um like you say it's accessible it's easy to get to you know you know what it's gonna do you can have a couple of glasses of wine it might numb that stress that you're feeling but then the stress comes back Whereas if you find Worse, other, almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the effect of poison on your body and then but with other ways of coping, you could get, make that stress go away. Yeah. You choose fitness over. Yeah. Is that drinking. something you found you had to work on or did you only ever really drunk, drink for fun rather than like to relax? For fun. It was, I only drank for fun and, and for special occasions. Yeah. It was, I never, ever would drink a glass of wine on an evening. It was always, it was just binge drinking at the mm. weekend. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be every night. And like, does Ash have a drink at home ever? No. So that's a no. lot easier for you to draw the line. Yeah. And he, he's actually gone nearly the full year with me. Oh, has he? He actually, when I got to my year point, he had his work Christmas due. They went out in Leeds. Mm. And he'd only drank once this year up until then. We went out. He said, oh, I'm, I'm just going to take it steady. Um, <laughs> Steady. Famous last he words. kind of did. Oh, he, yeah? he said he had eight pints and a, a shot of Jaeger, which is quite steady for him, really. Mm. Yeah. When I think back to what, what he used to drink at the mess or for the parties yeah. for the army. Um, but he felt horrific. Yeah. Because his body wasn't used to it. Yeah. This awful. is the thing, like your baseline adjusts, doesn't it? I don't even know if there's a, an, like the effect changes or whether it's just what your tolerance is of what you're used to and accept. Because I think when you haven't drunk for a while after like being pregnant and breastfeeding, I would have like one drink like, oh my God, I feel awful the next day. Whereas before I would happily have way more than that and think I was fine. Mm. Yeah, your tolerance, it, it must build up. I've spoken to so many people, um, so many of my clients that will have um, a bottle of wine at the weekend or a glass of wine. And that's what they're used to and they feel fine. Um, and then when they give it up and they say, I've gone a month or two months without having that bottle of wine or that glass of wine they feel great yeah like, I, didn't I didn't realize, realize how good I could feel yeah yeah I actually had um, one PT client um it was in person PT and we used to meet up at seven every morning she would have a bottle of wine every night wow. and she would get up and she would show up wow and I I was in awe of like how you're doing this because mm. I was I could not drink a bottle of wine and show up and like get down do burpees <laughs> like good for you um, I think but, you do you do to start to tolerate yeah. that yeah longer. But she, I don't know, like I haven't worked with her for a long time now. I don't know if she still drinks that amount, but her health and fitness journey had just started. And I do think mm. as people start to realize, oh, this little change makes me feel a bit better. Oh, this little change. Yeah. It starts to open up these questions. Like you said, Jamie, like maybe this is the last frontier of something that I need to explore. M maybe it yeah. is a long towards the end for a lot of people. 